Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. This is very exciting because this is it. This is part 8 of my HTTP DLL2 networking series and in it we're going to be doing hit detection. Now I hope you didn't mind part 7.5. I know it's a little bit unorthodox but I felt that when I was going through in preparation for part 8 I did notice that there were some things that we could do in an intermediary part so that when we do get to hit detection you just have to focus on that and that is hit detection. So here we are. You'll also notice that I'm using the Studio Dark Green skin because some of my subscribers did mention that the old GM8 skin kind of hurts the eyes, and it's a reality, it kind of does. So we're going to roll with this and see how that goes, you know? So here we are, as always. On the left, I have the server, and on the right, I have the client. So the first place we're going to be doing things is on the client. That's going to be on our right. We're going to be going to Object Local Player, into the Create Event. We need to create a variable to store our health and set it to 100. So there we go, my health equals 100. All good. Then I'm going to create a collision event between myself and an object bullet. Dragging some code over here. And here we're going to say, firstly, if other dot, so other being the bullet, owner's ID, so whoever owns the bullet, is not equal to my player ID. That means this bullet does not belong to us. Then my health is going down by 1. Also, it would help if I could spell health. Health's going down by one. Then we are clearing the buffer. Because we are saying, well, we've been hit. We didn't create the bullet. It's an enemy bullet. So we need to tell everyone that, unfortunately, I need a, a health update. So we're going to say h buffer right. This is going to be uint32. And firstly, we need to write... Actually, this is uint8. This is our tag. We're writing a tag of 7 to the server. So tag of 7 is going to be reserved for health updates. Just health updates. So whenever we change something to our health, we fly over a health pack. It's going to be saying, hey server, my health has changed. This is its new value. So whenever something changes with regard to our health, we're going to be sending a 7 to the server. Now, also we need to send our player ID. This is going to be the UN32. There we go. And I'm going to actually copy this. Here we're going to be sending my health. Then lastly we're going to write this to the socket. There we go. And it's the object controller. Socket. And this is our global buffer. There we go. So we get hit by a bullet. This is the collision event between ourselves and the bullets. If this bullet does not belong to us, decrease our health by 1, clear the buffer, send a tag of 7, send our player ID, and then send our new health, which in this case is going to be 1 less than it was before. Write that to the server, so we say OK. OK. Also, one other thing. I'm going to create a draw event just so that we can see our own health. Uh, don't forget to draw self. And draw set color is going to be C lime. Then our draw text. Oops. Uh, let's just put it the XY minus 100. And it's going to be the string value of my health. Very good. So that's just so that when we do get hit by a bullet, we can see, hey, our health's gone down and whatnot. So you guys can confirm that it is indeed working. All right, so that's okay. Now I'm going to go to Object Remote Player and do something similar. I'm going to be also creating a variable called My Health. Set it to 100. Okay, good. I'm going to have a collision event between ourselves and an object bullet. I'm going to go to a local player, actually grab the script, paste it in here, go inside, uh, delete all this stuff, delete all of that. Oh, actually, let's go back to our local player. One thing that we haven't done is said with other oops instance destroy. Okay, so that's just gonna that's just gonna destroy the bullet after we've done all the calculations and told the server that we need our health updated. Okay, cool. So I actually wanted to grab this back into our remote player, into the collision between ourselves and object bullet, paste it in there. And this needs to change to server ID. Cool.
cool. So if the bullet that the remote player is interacting with is not its own, that means it's taken damage, then it's just going to destroy the bullet, and the server will handle um, that whole health update. Okay, cool. Let's also go into our drawer over here. Let me grab this, my health. Go into the drawer over here. Let's copy one of these, paste it, make this minus 100. Cut that and paste it over there. Cool. So now we're going to be able to see the health of the remote player. Watch that change as it gets hit. Okay. And we're going to save that. So now it's time to switch over to the server. We're going to go to object player. Remember we were sending a 7. This was a tag of 7. Let's go down. There's 6. There's a break. Case 7. Break. And we were sending two variables in addition to the tag of 7. So one was the player ID. Now I don't want to call it player ID on this side because it's going to conflict with this. So instead I'm just going to call it PID. It's, I'd say it's descriptive enough. Uh, yeah, it's good for now. So PID equals h buffer read un32 from our global buffer. Then also there was our player health because h buffer read un32 from our global buffer. Very good. Then we're going to clear the buffer. So I'm actually going to grab this and this. We're going to clear the buffer. We're going to write a 7. So it's going to write a 7 back to the client. Then I'm going to write two variables. Both are un32. So I can actually grab this one. And just paste it twice. Let's get rid of these comments. Cool. So the one case, it's our... PID, the other one's player health. So in this case, the server is just a messenger. It's just saying, hey, this guy says he's been hit. I'm telling you all the other clients about it so that they can update him on their side. And then we can go up here and grab this with. Paste it down here. And fix this indentation. And try not to destroy current code. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. So with all the object players, don't send the message to the guy who told us that his health is updating. Okay, all good, guys. Look at that. We're getting in our player ID, we're getting in our player health, and we're sending that stuff straight on to all the clients. Top notch. Okay, so now we can jump straight back into our client. So let's save our server. Let's go back to our client, and in here we're going to go into our controller, and we need to intercept that case of 7. Here we go. Bam. Again, two temporary variables. Uh, let's call this one PID also. Uh, it was a uint32. And var player health. It's also a uint32. Then here we're going to say with object remote player. Maybe we, oh, there we go. We can grab this piece. Bam over there. Indentation problems. It's fixed. Cool. So with all the remote players, if their server ID is the same as the ID that's coming through from our server, then it means that their health, which is my health, remember that's the variable we created in object remote player, is going to now be equal to player health. Very simple. Okay, cool. And guess what? That pretty much wraps up the entire process of hit detection. Pretty cool stuff, eh? Before we test this out, I actually want to go into our sprites, 1, 2, and 3, and I want to enable precise collision checking, just so that when a bullet hits it, it has to hit the exact pixel of our ship. Um, in your game, you can determine if such pre precise collision checking is necessary. It doesn't really have to be, but uh, this is a small-scale project, so that's fine. Okay, cool. Awesome stuff, guys. So that's set up. What I'm going to do now before we test this out is I'm going to run you guys through the process once more just so that you understand exactly how things work. Okay, so we're going to be a local player. This is us flying through the game. We get hit by a bullet. That's our collision right over here. And this is saying, well, does this bullet belong to us? If it does belong to us, nothing's going to happen. If it doesn't belong to us, it means we've been hit by an enemy bullet. So we're going to decrease our health by one. 
doesn't have to be minus minus, you can say minus equals 5, any value you want. We're going to clear the current buffer, we're writing a tag of 7, we're sending our player ID as well as our new health, which is going to be in this case 1 less than it was before, writing that to the socket, the object controller socket, we're destroying the bullet. Okay, so remember that, 7, player ID, my health. Okay, so that's going all the way over into server land, which is here on the left, into object player. An object player step is saying, when it gets to 7, I'm, I'm intercepting a 7, and afterwards it means I'm getting two UN32s, one being the player ID of the person that says his health is getting updated, I'm also getting the value of his health. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the buffer, I'm going to write a return tag also of 7, and I'm going to be writing his player ID and his player health. And I'm going to send that to everyone except the guy that sent me the message. And that's going to be flying all the way back to all the clients over here. It's going to open up on their controller. Going down, it's going to be intercepted as a 7. It's reading in the player ID. It's reading in the player health. Both of UN 32s. It's going to cycle through all the object remote players. And it's going to say, well... I'm looking for a remote player whose ID is the same as the ID I'm getting through in this player health. And when I find him, I'm going to give him, oops, I'm going to give him this new health value and hence his health updates. Pretty cool stuff. And when he does collide with a bullet, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to destroy the bullet. And um, at the same time, his health gets updated. And we've also got the draws to show us what his health is. Okay, so right now, it is time to save everything and run this to test it out. So let's go. All right, here we go. This is some really exciting stuff. On the right here, I have me, JP, and on the left, I've got Bob. And Bob's going to be the enemy for now, sorry, if you're watching this and your name is Bob. It's just the way it's going to be today. So now if I shoot at Bob, the bullet's going to travel, it's going to hit him. This value here at the top right is going to change to 99. And on his screen, his value is going to go to 99. So let's test this out. Let's shoot. There it goes. There it travels. Bam, it hits him, 99. See that? 99, 99. Don't worry about the server. Those disappear, but anyway. He has been hit multiple times now. He's going to be hit multiple times. Bam, 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 bam. 92, and those values are going to correlate, so I can run circles around. Totally destroying Bob. Oh, it sucks to be Bob right now. But he's getting hit. His value of his health is going down as he gets hit. Actually, Bob's going to retaliate. He's going to shoot me back now. Our game is coming to life. As you can notice, it's far more exciting to play than it used to be. And we're actually seeing some stuff. Check that out, guys. We have implemented hit detection. And it's only taken us psh, under 15 minutes. Pretty cool stuff. So, I mean, that's as simple as that whole story gets. Pretty cool stuff. So, I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more of the very best. If you have any suggestions, send me a PM or put them in the comments below. I can get back to you and we can see if we can make things happen. If you've had any problems implementing this in your game or just following along, um, just put your queries in the comments below. I can get back to you or someone else can. We're still relatively small as a community on this channel, so I still have time for all you guys, which is really nice. So that's kind of special. If you like this video as well as any of my other videos, I mean, I do put in a lot of effort into making them. You can check out my Patreon campaign, donate a couple bucks every month. I do really, really, really appreciate your support. Keeps me going, keeps me making tutorials of the best quality that I can possibly imagine. And it shows. So thank you, check that out. You can download the project file straight there in the description, check that out. Um, if you want to, you can go to part 7.5, download that project file and actually build up part 8 alongside me so as you know as you've got it open watch the video make the changes in your part and in the end get it to this exact state it'll help you learn it's it's a great tool for learning if you do it at the same time as me or, or you can just follow along if you have the project open so yeah you can find the project files straight in the description feel free to follow me on various social media networks facebook twitter instagram even if you want to links are all in the description Coming up next time, I'm going to either be doing health and ammo pickups or a heads-up display. Um, at this point, I'm leaning towards the heads-up display because then when we do health and ammo pickups, we can actually visually see those changes. So yeah, more likely than not, it's going to be a heads-up display next. 
if you have any suggestions on where we should take this tutorial series as we progress now's the time to start putting those suggestions in because um, this is still on, in the early phases we can accommodate a lot of cool stuff at this point so yeah I'm looking forward to your feedback guys thanks for watching I'll see you guys next time for part 9 I know this is getting really exciting so until then cheers for now